Let's talk about failure as a coach. Let's get into it. So failing as a coach is a real phenomenon and it's not something to be resisted. You know, the great coaches know that they're going to fail over and over and over again. One of the things I've learned about coaching people is that often I literally get my heart ripped out from time to time. Why? Because as we've spoken about, coaching is an emotional game. I'm bringing my full self to the people I coach. I am standing for the victory in their life of whatever it is that we've set out to accomplish together. And for, what, for whatever reason, if we don't arrive at that end state, or if the relationship breaks down before we have a chance to accomplish the, the goal, that's an emotional impact, at least on me and my experience as a coach. You know, some experience of I let them down, or we failed at what we took on, or I wasn't up for the challenge, or they did something that was detrimental to fulfilling the goal. But remember, as a coach, I'm always taking responsibility. So it's not that they did something. It's more I failed to provide something that they needed to win the game. And so for whatever reason, as reality goes, we won't win all the time. But I do want to offer you something as a coach that has helped me deal with this phenomenon of failing and at the same time success. And what it is, is early in the relationship with the people you're coaching, I invite you to ask these kind of questions, which I do. You know, one question you can ask early in your relationship when you're really designing the game and the objectives and the goals and everything's fresh and everyone's happy and everyone's in love, right? And uh, the, the whole world's full of possibility. I ask the question, you know, where will we likely fail? Where will we likely fail? And you can look at that from different perspectives, right? But most people don't ask that question. Where will we likely fail in advance? Like, let's not talk about failure. Everything seems so great now. I want to confront it early and head on. And what I mean by where will we fail is twofold. First, it's in each other's relationship to taking on big goals. You know, as human beings, mostly we resist change. We resist promising something that seems like a stretch goal and because we don't like failing. So we want to avoid stretching ourselves and we rather be comfortable, quite frankly, and not get uncomfortable in the pursuit of something new. But we know as great coaches, we are supporting people through that uncomfortable space to get to a place where they then all of a sudden, what used to be uncomfortable is now comfortable for them, right? And the results are aligned with that new level of comfort and effectiveness they have in that area of life that we're coaching them in. So if I can get out in front of that human um, emotion, of that human reality, that we will be scared from time to time, that we will question ourselves for sure, that we will doubt ourselves. And much of that sometimes can be mistaken as we're failing. The results aren't showing up quickly enough. You know, of course, we step on the scale after two days in the diet and expect the results to be there right away, but we know that's not reality. The same is with coaching. Uh, the second place you can look at where are we likely going to fail from is where likely in the business results will we not see what we want to see as quickly as we may expect it to happen. So I like to also get out in front of that and have a, a business conversation about you know, the strategies we have in place. We've done our best thinking here. But given the past and given where the organization's at and given your present state of leadership, what in here are you most worried about us not hitting, right? What is the area of the plan that seems most almost unrealistic? Now, remember, we want to get every plan to have a, a logic and a realism to it. Otherwise, people don't engage with it uh, professionally because they don't see that it's even remotely possible. So they ignore it. But we've done that work before to design the plan and design the goals that way. And yet we will still be able to look at that with our business lens and say, here's the area of business that this would just be a complete breakthrough for us. How we said this here, this goal, we've never done it before. So we'll probably fail there along the way. Okay, good. Let's be aware of that. And again, you're setting expectations. This is the key thing. We don't want to set overpromised expectations with the people we coach. You know, maybe we're miracle workers, but not that kind of miracle. Okay. 
Most coaching just takes hard work, good people looking at the right thing at the right time with the right intent to move something forward. It's not going to happen overnight. So that's how we deal with failure as a coach is you get out in front of it. So then when those inevitabilities happen, both from a personal sense and from a business result sense, we don't lose ourselves for very long. In other words, we, we don't disappear. And the less that we can, we disappear and go into our old survival patterns, the more that we can come back together as a coaching relationship, the faster we're going to fulfill the goal. You know, if you have a six month goal and you spend a week being annoyed and frustrated or doubting yourself, that's a week out of whatever that is, six months of weeks, that's a big chunk of time. So we want to spend less time there and more time looking at how do we readjust strategy when there are, when there are, when the results aren't showing up. And then of course, the flip side of failure is success. So I invite you as well early on in the relationship to have a fun conversation, which is how are we going to celebrate our success? When we accomplish this goal, six months, one year, two years from now, what is it that we're going to do as a team, as, uh, as a group or one-on-one -on -one here that will really honor the body of work that it took to accomplish this together? Because again, if you're a high performance coach and I would invite any of you, if you're a coach to consider yourself that way, what else do you want to coach? Mediocre performance. So you're a high performance coach. We will produce incredible results and it starts with of course that sound plan and then your relationship to that plan and the per person or people you're coaching that says we absolutely will fulfill this game by that date and nine times out of ten you will fulfill the game by that date and the one time out of ten you don't fulfill the game by that date you will still have traveled great distance towards that aspirational goal so as a coach, we know we will be successful and you can have a conversation with the people you're coaching in advance. Hey, listen, imagine six months from now, a year from now, what are we doing? Where are we at? Who are we celebrating with? Cause we're going to pop a bottle of champagne. All right. So dealing with failure as a coach is important. And my coaching for you is deal with it upfront in your coaching relationship with the people you're coaching, with the teams you're coaching, with the organization you're coaching, have people have a, mature professional relationship to expectations and get out in front of people being disappointed or resigned or cynical about how fast things may show up, especially given the size of the stretch goal you're inside of. That will help you stay true to the right actions with quality thinking, with care and attention moving forward versus being in a reactive mode because people aren't dealing with failure or perceived failure from an empowering context.